it's the mask. Corvo's mask. It's up there. It's new. Hey, everybody, it's time for, uh, the, uh, I was going to say Dying Run, but that's not right. The Great Ace Attorney. Ooh. We're doing it. Calm down. Okay, I think the game might be a little too low. Turn it up a little bit. All right. Hey, uh, start playing from saved data. This might take us, oh, nope. We're starting right at the, right at the reading part. Excellent. <sighs> my name is Ryanosuke Naruhodo. I'm a fledgling lawyer just starting out on my journey. Six months ago, I arrived as a visiting student of law, having made the long voyage across the sea from the Empire of Japan to here, London, England. And on the way, in quite extraordinary circumstances, I made the acquaintance of a world-famous detective. Currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings, from where I run my legal consultancy of sorts. I've successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court, the Old Bailey. If I went to a law office and it looked like this, <laughs> I think I would be mildly I mean, concerned. Listen, Saul Goodman have... has a sketch-ass office, too. That's fair. He does have a stack, uh, an impressive stack of books and such on his desk, so I suppose that's... A Those books are definitely not law books. <laughs> no. That's definitely like a bunch of Grimm's fairy tales. But since a particularly grueling and unforgettable legal battle <sighs> four months ago now, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I lost my right to return. But that epic trial is just one small part of an epic tale, a tale which is now about to awaken from slumber. Thanks to a letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. What the fuck was that <laughs> supposed to be? That was the weirdest rumble I've ever heard. I'm assuming that's a this is hungry, but that was an incredible He's... noise. Mmm, what a delicious smell wafting up the stairs. It must be nearly time for breakfast. I'd better go down to Mr. Sholmes's suite. And say good morning Jones's. to the great detective and his flatmate. Great detective. He's doing his best. He's just an idiot. 30th August, 728. I just wanted Jones's to be clear. Suite. Unless he's off screen, this fucker can't solve a damn thing. That's true. Ah, oh, Bruno, good. I was just going uh, to talk to you. The big uh, uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I spent six more minutes <laughs> making dry morning, heating noises. Iris. It smells delicious as usual. Before we eat, though, I have some news. I had a surprise this morning. Shush! Not another word, Mr. Nara. Oh, God, he's already here. This could be Why is there the bullet holes spelling VR? Do we know what that's about? No. I can click on that if it gives me a chance. I, had, I don't remember seeing that before now. I feel like you would have hmm. pointed it out. <laughs> Possibly. There's a lot going on in this room. It's like a fucking magic eye puzzle. Or not that. Um, an I spy book. Oh, you remember I spy books? Yeah. Mm. Like where's Hey, Waldo speaking of uh weird strange well no no that, that where's Waldo's word Waldo. I'm talking about I spy specifically. I spy had a whole fucking vibe, dude. Also speaking of weird vibes, did you know that you say yeah you have you you have you have you heard of the back rooms? Yeah. They're from Oshkosh, turns yeah, out. I heard about that. Uh, the original picture is from some place in Oshkosh that I've driven past a lot. I've never gone in it because it's like model cars, so it's not one of the hobby shops I go to. Yeah. And I was the, like, huh? Uh, that's the fucking no idea. We're gonna go to, that we're gonna go to one of these days. Just we we found out because some random guy that Boko follows is like, oh yeah, that was my local hobby shop in Oshkosh, and we're like, excuse me. <laughs> fucking uh, wild it's the back rooms man we're, we're gonna get to go wisconsin to classic rooms. we're gonna take a picture well it doesn't look like that anymore <laughs> i mean probably not but no i mean it literally doesn't like that was from when they were remodeling the place like over 10 years ago uh damn that was like oh we cleared everything out and now we're gonna remodel so like i don't think there's anything left sad this could be just the abstruse thing for my pre-breakfast stagnation repelling mental stimulation, my dear fellow. If I met this guy in real life, I probably would kill him with hammers. <laughs> Morning to you too, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, yes. Like... I see. So oh, <laughs> God. Personal space, man. Man, this is not a good look for him. 
so it's kind of like that thing where you know where like you watch a show and you're like i love this character but you also know that like in real life they would be the most insufferable thing you've mm-hmm. ever had to deal with that's how i feel about mr Sholmes. like he's 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 very entertaining he's but fun oh, and a goofball but i would never want the, to deal with this man in real life <laughs> the the the, the, the mere thought of having to interact with this man seriously makes me uh want to yeah, so I see. It's hey, Mole Guy, to refresh your memory, in the first game, the case tutorial, the second one is asking you to come in and some of his events. It's been a time shoot with the boom pen. Oh, I see. We're getting, a, we're getting a, little, a little rundown, a little fun little cliff notes. Right. Roger that. Uh, the truth is as clear text. to me as day. My faculty is trying to remember. Revealed it again. It was software, right? Software hopeful. I'm trying to remember what to refer to Molly as. Software applicant. That makes it sound like he's turning into a software. Mm. He's turning Odor? into computers. He's becoming a computer. He's gigamorphine. Well, what are you? That wrong voice. What, what are you talking about? You, Mr. Nardo, you have this very morning met with a surprise. I said that already. The case. Um. Really, my dear fellow, it barely warrants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. Secondly, you have neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket. Clearly, when considered together, these two facts point to you having been flustered this morning. Can I talk now? But of course, of course, though I don't look for admiration, you understand. My hair always looks like this. It's been this way since I first met you. Oh, it has. And the button was ripped off last night, if you remember. By you. Harley pulled your button off? Ah, yes, I recall the incident now. It was after supper, was it not? At the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of a haunting tune. But then, to my utter dismay, the third string snapped. Why did that have to happen? Why? Little wonder, then, that in my vexation I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from its proper place. Well, I'd like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. And it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is. Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes. Helpful. What matters at the present time, my dear fellow, is simply whether or not my deduction was unerring. But Hurley, Bruno said it when he came in, didn't he? I walked in and said, I have a surprise. I had a surprise yeah. this morning. <laughs> well, that really is a surprise. Yes, I really this... <laughs> dislike that I can hear your echoing laughter <laughs> from upstairs before. Also, cut out, so I think you might need to, to dial it back a little bit. Ah. So I think your mic peaked. Oh, is my microphone back to normal volume again, finally? No, it's still kind of uh, low. Uh, I don't know what happened. Just my microphone's volume is low now, so I had to crank up the game. I tried to fix the it. Games. It didn't work. Yes, this is the... Nope, wrong voice. This, yes, this is man is the pride of the British Empire. The famous consulting detective, Mr. Herlock Shawns. Software a... engineer applicant? Sure. Close enough. Ah, you commissioned an artist. Probably some sort of dumb <laughs> bastard. If I had to guess. Ho ho ho. Ho 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 ho. There can't be a single person in the world who doesn't know his name. Alright then, enough of this silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it goes cold. And I have a new this herbal tea for you to try too. It's my latest special blend. I hope you enjoy your commission. I'm sure the artist that drew it was not a bastard. Probably not. I heard that they're uh, that they've got a six pack, <laughs> but they're shredded. I've heard some other things. <laughs> and here we have Iris Wilson. This the only six packs in this house are beers. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, America. A truly America. exceptional young girl who's the author of a highly successful serialization here in London. She yes. sure is. Yes, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. No, Sherlock Holmes, as published in Ranst Magazine. 
So, Mr. Norhode, won't you put us out of our misery? What surprised you this fine morning? Ah, well, I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie, you mean? What was it, really? That's right, and she had some rather startling news, in fact. Ah, intriguing indeed. You must tell us about it over breakfast. Oh, yes, what fun. I need to know about the bullet holes. They're bothering me now that I know that they're there. Nothing particular of note. I guess it's not important. It's not important. Is this never a has been. Holmes reference? I have no idea. I never read the serials. I don't know enough about Sherlock Holmes. Now this small, this weird dog though. I can type with my eyes shut, you know. Oh, it's not the dog, it's the typewriter. I can believe it. When a deadline's approaching, you sound like a Gatling gun. That reminds me of a dream I had the other day. It was such a funny one. It woke me, actually. I was typing for a whole hour in the pitch black, but I didn't make a single mistake. That's incredible. But then, when it got light, I found that there wasn't any paper in the machine. Oh, no. Now, I Steven, can I... I... I've been typing it all. Yeah. Steven, I have, I have, a, I have a serious question. Yep. Mole guy has made me remember the cat door maker. Yep. Can I ban him finally? Is this can I I am personally insulted. You can time uh, him out for on the deep to 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. But I am Oh, I'm seething. You want to. Though. That fucking cat door maker. Wait, what is it? He... Mm, I'm not going to get back into it. I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. You can't make me. No one can make I think you might have just fallen I just I also like how I like how her area is like, oh look, it's girl, so it's pink, but she's smart, so we have a board of math in the back, <laughs> so you can see what a smart <laughs> brainiac she is. That is. It's I fucking. Ah uh, yes, this is. Ah uh, yes, down ideas uh, yes. isn't it? Like my my idea of fucking this random equation. What's in the melting pot today? Hmm, the blue carbon. Yes, it's from a case of theft that Hurley solved ages ago, but that of a precious stone. A carbuncle is another name for a garnet, you see, especially if it's cut with a rounded top. Oh, really? And this garnet was blue, was it? Well, that's the thing. They're usually red. No blue garnets have ever been discovered. Oh. So who knows what the stolen gemstone actually was? That's the real mystery of the case. Proper Herlock Sholmes conundrum, huh? Is that a real a one? Hopper, the blue carbuncle? Yeah. I mean, it's probably based off something. Uh, yep. Blue carbuncle. It's actually just direct. They just directly took it this time. Yep. It's one of the 56 Sholmes stories. I see. There are different a near priceless it. gemstone, the blue carbuncle. Carbuncle is another name for red alamadine. Or Almadine, perhaps. That's been cut into a smooth, convex face in a method called Carbocon. Whoa. <laughs> Apparently it refers to any red gemstone, most often a garnet. Carbocon is a gemstone that's been shaped and polished as, a, polished as opposed to faceted. Ah, so it's smooth. Instead of got like the... It's, it's like a smooth... Flat surfaces, it's got like one smooth... It's usually uh, convex, obverse with a flat reverse. It's like those little rock beads that they sell at the hobby, the the Hobby Lobby. Yeah. That you never know what to do with except put in a bowl, or yeah, use for magic gathering. Or you could play uh, what's that game with Mancala? That's the one, right? I guess those rocks would be a little big for Mancala, but Man, yeah, if you had the board big enough. Let's need a bigger board in it. These are different pieces of evidence from cases you've solved, aren't they, Mr. Sholmes? Not quite, Mr. Nardo, not quite. These trinkets are a selection from cases I've solved with particular aplomb. They're souvenirs of my success. Memories, not Mr. Nardo, memories. Really? So tell me about the case in which the bust of Napoleon featured. Hmm, I forget. Memories, he says. Wonderful, Mr. Sholmes, wonderful. I'm glad that Naruto is just already done with his bullshit. <laughs> letter. This is the letter that arrived from Japan this morning. 
by, inten by International Post. Oh, how lovely. Look at Susie's beautiful writing. I wish I could read it. And how is your judicial assistant faring, may I ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, she actually appeared as a lawyer at the Japanese Supreme Court and won a case. Ah, really? Oh, isn't she wonderful? Cut above your good self, my dear fellow. Hey, I've won cases. <laughs> I've won cases too, you know. Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared in the trial as a witness. Natsume, Natsume. No, I don't recall that name. Of course you do. We helped the man twice. You know, in those two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago? Ah, the mustache twitchy man with the somewhat feline eyes and the mustache. He didn't have two mustaches, Hurley. Yes, who could forget those two cases? They made a very deep impression on me. Although I must confess, the details are a little hazy now. A very deep impression they made on you, clearly. Startling news. So, what's this startling news penned by Miss Susato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, yes, it's very interesting, you know. I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not, not occur. He's totally forgotten, then. Anyway, in her letter, Miss Suzato asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. And it took place half a year ago. For what purpose? Because of something that Mr. Natsume said to her, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan so suddenly might have something to do with that case of the haunted lodgings. Oh. On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mr. Sato's father questioned him about the case, she says. And something Mr. Natsume said appeared to trouble Professor Mikotoba, prompting him to send that telegram. Oh, that case, yes! It was very strange, wasn't it? Yes. And I had compiled the whole story into a nice neat manuscript ready for publication, too. Well, then Hurley, he was all funny about it, remember? He was very mean. That story must not be published, he said, very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that? Are you sure? You perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Sholmes? About why Miss Susato was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan? Repatriation. I, I guess. Repatriation. What? She expatriated to London? Kind of. I, I, guess I mean, they were planning to be here for a long time. I suppose that's true. It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan. Indeed it was, due to a telegram she received from her homeland, I believe. That's right, telling her to return urgently. Yes, because her father had passed away. No, 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 it just said he was suffering from a high fever, the cause of which was unknown. He's not dead. But no, to... he's dead. No, dead as shit. I can tell. Dead is Dr. Wilson. <laughs> dead, dead is Dr. John H. Wilson. But according to nope, but according to this letter, I keep wanting to do the Shomes voice. That news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? A ruse. So Susie's daddy lied to her so she'd make the journey back home. Why would he do that? I have to admit I have absolutely no idea. But she believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. Summoning her back to Japan so suddenly like that. I wonder what Miss Susato's father is hiding. Hmm. Hurley, do you know what it's all about? Ah! He quick changed. Hmm? Ah, was very who fast. can say? What? But, but you said... Please, I have engagements, my dear fellow. My calendar is quite surprisingly full today. And a stringent analysis of the matter would be excessive, I feel, even if I were quite at leisure. So, man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? I will, Hurley, don't worry. See you later. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid man. Stupid bow. He scuttled off rather quickly there. He is a real scuttler, isn't he? I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. The Seki-san was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden from being published. By of all people, Mr. Sholmes. 
Aha! I found them at last! Iris, are, are they... The notes about the case. That's right. Susie and I compiled them together. The case of the haunted lodgings. Do you want to read them, Bruno? Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. <laughs> yes! Yes. Yes, indeed I would. I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadows of this case, but perhaps if I read over the notes again, something might come to light. That's the spirit! You know that thing we were we were specifically forbidden from doing? We must do it. And we so, gotta Iris do it. Iris and I decided to read over the case notes again together. Everything from what happened to our investigation to that fierce battle in court that followed. Reliving every detail. I just need to find a clue. And I have all the time in the world. Because of course, I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain. <laughs> Finally, frankly. I don't remember that happening. I don't know if they showed us why. I think, yeah, as you say, I think they're gonna Probably get not. into it. Yeah. Because this is the current day, and Mulligan was saying that we're going back to in between the third or the fourth and fifth cases. Yeah, because the fourth case was Soseki's. And then. The, there was a one that happened that nobody talked about, and then there was a time skip to, to the last one. Right. Yes. Ahem. It was six months ago, a mysterious incident that unfolded on the wintry streets of London. A fat woman was stabbed. <laughs> I forgot! Not I forgot she was too fat to get stabbed or whatever. Or was it a book? I can't remember. Something like that. It was some some was stupid bullshit. Snowy pavement of Briar Road. Like, how did they even get this picture? Fortunately, her life was spared, but she was unconscious for several days following the incident. Oh, that's right! It just knocked her the hell out somehow. The fog was thick, and nobody saw her attacker, but by a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time and was duly arrested. That man was Soseki-san. And the man who affected his arrest was Mr. Sholmes. Believing in our compatriot's innocence, Susato san and I decided to represent Soseki san in court. He was taken to the hospital. And after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. You want to continue to take him? I know technically sure. fast, it was me, but you know. I <laughs> did, yeah, I don't know. Joyous, wait, fuck. Joyful, joyous, jubil jubilation. This is not even the voice I was doing. I don't care anymore. <laughs> you were doing like a Pink Panther thing, I think. No, no, I was trying to do oh, Snagglepuss, Snagglepuss, but sorry. I'm really bad at different it. Different guy. Unless I'm specific, yeah, very different guy. The Pink Panther barely talks. Uh, and Snagopus is gay. I don't know if the Pink Panther is gay. It's kind of unclear. I think he likes fabric or uh, fiberglass insulation. Hmm. Was the man's Do you know the that he's been the Owens Corning fiberglass insulation uh, spoke sky thing for like 70 years or something crazy? I did not. That's kind of wild. <laughs> it's like it's been 60 or 70 years. I wonder if they just, of like, the... got the rights to that, like, in, in perpetuity or something. It's like a licensing thing? Right. I like... looked this up once, and then forgot all of it. Oh, nope, I'm wrong. It's only been 40 years. They've only been doing it since the 80s. So, 44 years? I don't... I have no idea how... I get that reference. Uh, was the man's reaction after the trial, but his jubilant jubilation was short-lived. I think it was just because their fiberglass was pink. Probably. Yeah, you're European? It's hard to guarantee. He received a telegram from Mr. Sholmes the following morning. Yeah, you're European. Why well, don't look at me? They bring their boys up different in those charming foreign ports. The victim of Briar stabbing sports. has regained consciousness. Hurry to Bart's at once. <laughs> the Simpson? We have to go to America, yes. to Illinois, which may or may not be a state yet. So Susato san and I summoned a hansom and headed immediately to the hospital. So 
I assume that just means like a taxi or a cab or something, but why? Why don't they just say that? Whoa. I like this goo goober little fucking fertility idol that's yeah, in the what, center of the what room. What the hell is that? And there's just a it's whole not... ass rat there also. <laughs> Uh, I think that's a mouse. 21st February, 5.30 a.m. St. Bartholomew's Hospital Recovery Ward. There you are at last. Good morning, Mr. Sholmes. I think not. Oh, I'm here. Because it's the past, right. You're late. What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at 5 o'clock, Mr. Sholmes. And it's a 20 minute ride to the hospital. That's right, and it's half past five now. I think we made very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I've been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. Uh, you need to stop doing <laughs> drugs, man. <laughs> <laughs> In point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by a telegram boy. And sure. feeling it was somewhat unjust that I alone had been roused at such an hour, I sent one to you. Well, thanks for that. Anyway, you're here now, so the victim is over there. She's only just regained consciousness. Holmes the kind of guy to wake up to have to pee and then thro fucking throws a bucket of water <laughs> on someone else. You should introduce yourselves, and I shall observe from here. So that's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with a knife in her back. Push her down a hill. I want to see her go. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> that's okay, I can say these things. I'm also fat. I have the card. I, I have the fat phobia card. I would also fall down a hill in a comical way. It's just how we. I roll. think I would. Uh... <laughs> uh, thanks for coming out, everybody. <laughs> we'll be here next week. Her name is Ah. Yes, here we are, Miss Green. Do you get it? Because her dress is. What the hell is this thing? Is this a model? This I, I think it's supposed to be a model of her. It's wild. Why, why did someone... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this rounded... Nope. Not not my voice. That's not even my character. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking... You were just like, yes, I am Susato, and I will steal the voice. This no one will ever isn't know. the most charming, is it? I don't think that's just a decoration, Mr. Narado. It's an artist's mannequin, I believe, used when practicing and sketching the human form in different poses. Really? It's not exactly what you'd call a typical figure for that purpose, though, is it? No, I suppose not. I confess I've never seen one quite so full-figured before. Well, if you want to draw a full-figured person, that's the right tool for the job. Fat people get drawn, too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Look, there's a photograph in this frame here. Look at this photograph. It's some skinny guy with a Oh yes. Maybe that's like her husband who's fucking dead or something. Or like a Jack Spratt scenario. Oh yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. Oh right, it was Miss Garrett. She was throwing shit at her husband and a knife went out the window and caught her in the back. Yes, it like ricocheted off the slanted window or whatever we had to prove. Yeah. Right, right down into this lady. Because the 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 moon and sun lady, yeah. the moon guy and the sun lady, were fighting. Yeah. He looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. Perhaps the young woman's special someone. Do you think? Yeah, uh, he has a wedding ring on. I noticed this because I'm an actual detective. Damn it! <laughs> I know! The game's supposed to teach you to look for clues, and it doesn't! It just throw it jingles keys in your face like a baby! My, my, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> I didn't know you had a sense for matters of the heart. Not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I nah. heard. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. Oh, my, my. Papers. I like how they made the scrawl real bad. Yeah. Accurate. Uh, this looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed. What is this place? Like seen? at all? <laughs> you know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign in our local park. 
for the pigeons, yes. This is a person. Poor woman, I hope she hasn't read this. Listen. Is the rat not clickable? Eek, I told you it was a fucking mouse! I knew it! I fucking Wrong. knew it! I'm so good at rodents, apparently. <laughs> I fucking knew it was a it wasn't a rat. Yeah, it's probably like your shape is different or something. Well, this one's got big ass Mickey Mouse looking ears. Yeah, that's, that's mouse. That's mouse shit. He eek eek. I've never known what an eek is supposed eek. to sound like. You know, <laughs> like people don't say eek. You know what I mean? Most people it's like how laugh. dogs don't say. It's like how dogs don't say bark, but I don't know what Eek is trying to re like. I know that it's like a shocked thing, but like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't know what like the actual noise is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very strange. I'm the, I'm the rat man. Eek! A mouse, Mister Naruto. An enormous mouse. Hmm. Vermin in the hospital. That doesn't seem the best. But looks like a very healthy specimen, doesn't it? It's very plump. I'm not sure we can say that's down to the excellence of this facility, if that's what you were thinking. Maybe it's her pet. People have pet, pet, pet rats and mice. They don't live long. Yeah, okay. That must be a bag of Miss Being small Greens. Prey animals. Yeah, apparently it's got something to do. M mammals largely, like, their lifespan is determined weirdly uh, by, like, a heart size thing. Oh, that makes sense. Like, how much your heart pumps. That tracks. Like, I, how many I times you got? I remember reading that forever ago. Never followed up on it. I could be spitting nonsense. That's the true. only thing That's I know is that I uh, a. A Kabukon is a gemstone that has been shaped and polished and not mm -hmm. faceted. That must be a bag of Miss Green's personal belongings. She would have been brought directly here after she was found stabbed on the pavement, though. I expect a friend or family member probably brought some things for her. Alright then, let's see what's inside. A change of clothes. I gotta say, down, her just right sitting there them. sad in the back <laughs> is, really, is really killing me. No, Mr. Nahado. You must never scrutinize a young maiden's personal belongings. But the young maiden might have a chocolates or biscuits or caramel. And I want them. <laughs> you want to steal? You're going to steal her treats? Oh, there's a Yo, <laughs> Ryanosuke knocks down my door and goes, Yo, this fat fuck might have treats. <laughs> gimme, gimme. Ah. Ooh, a cabinet with a red note on it. <laughs> I'm okay. Are you okay? What the f- <laughs> That sounded violent. Yeah, sometimes I just have to violently clear stuff from my throat, you know. I don't. Ugh. There are all sorts of medicines in this cabinet. Look. I'm not sure if it's safe leaving them in reach of everyone like this. Yes, you're right. I can imagine if you were peckish, you might try a whole bottle or two. Well, at least there seems to be a little lock to secure the cabinet doors. I don't imagine that would stop you if you were hungry. I worry that you'd break the lock. Hunger doesn't turn me into a criminal, you know, Mr. Sato. You were already a criminal. <laughs> ah, this looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital, then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. Alright, anyway. Um, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, I'm, uh, Ryanosuke Naruhodo from the Empire of Japan. Hmm. I, I mean, I guess I, I could like, do her as, say, like, a like German, as a dumb German, little German yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ach no, was? Was it your knife that I use a man who... No, 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 I'm a lawyer. 
out of us. And I'm Sasato Mikotoba. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> God damn it. Oh no, Vas, Vas is your knife then? Are you the one? No, 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 I assure you. I'm Mr. Nahado's judicial assistant. We heard that you regained consciousness and wanted to come give you our best wishes. What is a little bo German boy? Well, say mm -hmm. la vie. <laughs> no, it's a German again. boy. Don't go into that cave. This cave is full of blood and smoke. And... No, little German. I mean, this is the most ger little. Ger there could be an actual little German boy, and I guarantee you, this character is more little, little German boy. Like, look German at her. Boy coded. <laughs> Absolutely, little German boy coded. That's what the LGB and LGBT means. <laughs> I, I've not. I've never figured out the T or the Q, or the I or the A or the plus sign. But I know the first three are little <laughs> German boys. Little German boy. <laughs> They have to be. Best wishes for me. Um, Donkashan. <laughs> I'm Olive. Olive Green. Of course you are. <laughs> I'm an artist. But no, that's not right, is it? But I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. But the truth is, I don't have any talent. I know I don't. I'm so sorry for it's you. no wonder I was stabbed in the back. I don't think that's related, actually. I was stabbed because I'm bad at art. <laughs> I'm a bad artist. <laughs> Gosh, this young... That's, is that Gosh, word? this... What, which there's one? A, there's like some word for like about to cry. It's like verb something. Verklempt, maybe? I don't remember. Verklempt is a word. But I couldn't tell you what exactly it is. Let's look up. Uh, nope, that's overcome with emotion. Uh, well, I guess that could mean about to cry. Maybe that's just the context. It's, a, it's, it, it's, it's also uh, uh, Yiddish, apparent. Oh. Well, no, hold on. I'm getting another source here. It's, well, no, it's a, 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 it's a word in German as a Yiddish learn, loan word. Past participle of verklemmen and farklemmen to clamp in a vice, pinch, choke, choke up, and ah. inhibited uptight and to become stuck. Is schmuck opposite of mensch? Yes, I knew that one already. <laughs> God, I love Yiddish learn loan words. It's great because I'll be reading comic books from the 70s, and like half of the writers are fucking Jewish. And so, like, there's always a Jewish character who calls fucking everyone Goyim. It's hilarious every time. I'm like, I want a fun Jewish friend who walks around and calls me a Goy. It would be awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't think people talk like that anymore. <laughs> if they well, they did in the 70s! They did, damn it! I do hear mensch sometimes, though. Con con comic books would never lie to me. They did. They did, damn it. Push air is an air advice. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perp perspective, I suppose. I think Mala guy is calling you out. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. F <laughs> fucking got him. To be suddenly struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had in this dream. Yeah. It was so cold that day. The fog was so thick. I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all the that time. 
But the case has been solved, hasn't it? While I've been in here in the hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madam. Spectacularly, by none other than I, Sherlock Holmes. I was in the walls! <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Nahado's hard work in court that solved the case. Are you yet to hear what happened to Miss Green? Yeah, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police forces is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. I hope he doesn't have infinite fucking chips. Chips, man. Fish and chips. F fucking fish and... Oh, I see. Me coming round seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry. I should never have regained consciousness. It is very selfish of me. Oh no, we're all so relieved that you're on the mend, Miss Green. We really are. With that kind of attitude, maybe her surname should be Blue, not Green. Good joke. You think you're <laughs> funny, <laughs> Rianos? <laughs> you think you're a fucking comedian, dude? It's okay, he didn't say that one out loud. So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? <laughs> Something about the way he said that. So, you make art, huh? You make art, huh? Oh, what the <laughs> fish, fish, American fries. Remember when they had American yeah. fries and that was a thing for a while? That was back when the culture war was still kind of fun and not spooky. But the American fries thing killed me. What a day. We don't want, we don't have french fries, brother. <laughs> we don't got, we don't got the, them goddamn. That's what I mean when I say I'm proud to be American. Stupid shit. Mm -hmm. Like American fries and fireworks that blow off my fi my fingers. Fuck yeah. I have to lose one every year or I'm not really American. I have to turn off my card. Och nein. Oh, I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledgling artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. At the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh my! An Academy of Fine Arts. Great Britain is... I... I have a moral qualm with this next <laughs> sentence, Stephen. Can I skip it? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Especially after I just talked about America so much. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Wasn't it freedom? It was, it was absolutely freedom fries. You're right. I had forgotten. Freedom fries. In a proud beat. <laughs> <laughs> We're eating freedom fries and hot dogs, brother. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Ugh, nein. Actually. I don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Ugh, nein. Is it? Brixton is some ten stops away on the underground from here. And Thorndike Academy is a mere three minute walk from Brixton Town Centre. Does that matter, Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> Perhaps no! Brighton <laughs> Road is a far less sal salubrious part of town by comparison. Ooh. Dwelt in by those of inferior means, including the maleficent Mr. Mustache. Inferior means? I suppose so seki san does fit the bill. Wow. Kind of it's neat. the ghetto! It's the ghetto, Narahodo! It's where we put the paws! <laughs> Narahodo, are you listening to me? Economics! <laughs> Alright. Sherlock Sholmes, but as a crypto bro. <laughs> Thoughts? It struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. That's all. Shvetting. What's this? I'm shvetting. Oh! Mr. Sholmes! You should be ashamed of yourself prying into a young maiden's private affairs. <laughs> Oh dear me, do forgive me. Um, if you don't mind. Don't you stop talking about me like I'm not here? I am a Persian, and I have feelings. 
and being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. <laughs> oh yes, of course, we won't keep you. Thank you so I'm much. I'm gonna keep to trying to make her sound progressively more about to cry uh -huh. until I myself am actually crying. What? <laughs> Is there a I wish you didn't make that noise every time someone fucking showed up. Is there a Mr. Narivada here? Mr. Narivada? Nope, more British. Is this, Do it again. Is there a Mr. Narivada here? Mr. Narivada? There we go. Narivada now. Well, um, <laughs> if you're looking for Narihado, the lawyer, that's me, but... Ah, I, can't I can't say something so Japanese and weird! Oh, Mr. Navafolder, good. Here's his view. Ah, uh, he Here's literally can. not Mr. Saucy Nutsmeg. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no, no! Shut the fuck up, Saucy Nutsmeg. I'm, I'm not Mr. Nutsmeg. Send a message to me. Well, why would a policeman be delivering a message from Mr. Natsume? Exactly. What's going on? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing playing delivery boy at this time in the morning? Ah, what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Oh. You get to steal my mail in front of me? Well, this is most unexpected. Something wrong, Mr. Sholmes? Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes, he says. Have you not seen this note? No, how could I have? You took it from me, you <laughs> fucking this guy, dude. It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls. A case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. They've, like, all been murder cases. Susato, they've, like, all been murder cases. It's almost never not a murder case. You're not one of them Kunoichis, are you? <laughs> God, I miss, I, I miss that fucking stream. Ugh. Lost to time. I'm glad you were there. I'm glad you were there for that, Bolo guy. Three people in the world, I think, got to see that actually happen. And two of them were the streamers. <laughs> Murder? You know what it Call is. a cab. Time is of the essence. I fucking think but about Kunuichi's is... in that accent all the fucking time. We've yet to read Mr. Natsume's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodgings once we did. That will be entirely convenient. Because he's dead! <laughs> he's not, I know he's not, but imagine. It'd <laughs> be wild. Convenient? What do you mean? It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. Give me the goddamn the note. The murder we must Does... investigate took place at Mr. Mustache's lodgings. Wait, what? Oh, hello. I, are they just making up a different word for cat every time they need one? <laughs> what is what is happening? I was like, they like did like, did they call it? This is the third version of cab they <laughs> said. I like, is this a bit? This must be a bit, right? They must be doing a bit, yeah. Because like, yeah, because like, this is bit. like a French word for for it. I I don't know how French works. Hold on, let me. Hold on, hold on. You're giving me more time to do my notes. Fiocker. Believe it or not, it's Fiocker. Oh, I thought it would have been more French than that. Fiocker. French. Fiacre. Fiacre? Fiacre? I'm not Fiocre. doing it. Oh, there's a British one. Oh, and there's no voice option. Fiocre. I'll hail Fiocre at once. Because they used, like, yeah, handsome, right? Cab, right, yeah. It was a handsome the first time, and then Sholm said cab. <laughs> it was only yesterday that Soseki-san was in court and we were dispelling doubts about his innocence. And now, the very next day, there's a murder at the man's own address. He may very well be the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. <laughs> but we discovered it was actually worse than that. Incredibly. Improbably. 21st February, 7.18 a.m. Mr. Natsume's lodgings. Ground floor. Oh shit, the foppy guy is dead. Sad. What on earth? Oh my, the gentleman is deceased without question. <laughs> He's dead. 
Welcome to Mr. Naruhado Esquire. Mr. Natsume. Why? Why is this happening? Why to me? I've only just got out of court yesterday! I was finally home after two days of misery! And then I wake up the next day to this! No early bird should catch a worm like this! Woeful worm without wiggle! I see you're in high spirits again this morning, Mr. Mustache! Ah! Not the horrible airlock shows! Shoo! Shove off! Show yourself the door! I never invited you! Mr. Sholmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I am entirely no. at your disposal, <laughs> Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? I'm actually more of a hindrance, if you can believe it. <laughs> there. Oh. Yes! It's about time! Now, if I remember right, I was barely moving my mouth at all. <laughs> Here you are already. A busy body. Ah, Inspector Gregson, what a pleasant surprise. Ah, oh, yes, the, 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 cat, yeah, the cat thing. There he is. Hold on, I just need a moment to let him eat his fucking infinite regenerating food. I never noticed, but he just, like, bites, like, four of the fries on the second bite. Holy shit. Like, do you see that? <laughs> That's incredible. He just, like, fucking chows through half of it before he reshuffles. Fries are busy. Gives me heartburn every time I see your face in a crime scene, Sholmes. Ha! I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I feel too, Gregson. This is your crime scene. Don't you go touching anything. Or good morning to you too, Sunshine. <laughs> Alright, let's look around. There's something weird on the ground over here. There's a weird plank. There's a weird plank. Nope, that's nothing. The weird plank isn't important. <laughs> God, it's actually very... Ar I'm just gonna use the mouse for this part. <laughs> Oi, I should hand you off. You're not gonna mess up my crime machine. Oh, um, no, I just wanted to look, that's all. No chance. I know you're kind. You mess up just by looking at it. Ugh, someone's in a bad mood. There's certainly some bad air in here, isn't there? <laughs> right, it sounds like I'd better talk to the inspector first and try to curry some favor. <sighs> Hi, Inspector. So, Inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, that got me for a second. Mr. William Shamespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Who is a larger here? As you can probably tell, he was an actor. Bit of a dead loss, as it happens. Or just dead. I don't think that's... Mr. Shamespear? That seems in bad taste. No, I don't care. <laughs> it was the land... Wait, who am I? It was the landlord, or Mr. Garadab, the larger Mr. Natsume who found him. The fella didn't rise in his usual hour, so Garadab got worried and kicked the door down. But doesn't Mr. Garadab have a bad leg? Uh, right there. There was that jittery Japanese hunchback over there actually <laughs> did the kicking. Really? Sasaki-san? Also, yeah, uh, I tuned into the stream, Steven. I see what you're saying. Your voice is real low on it. Yeah, I don't like... I've got it cranked up to plus 12 on my mixer, so I don't know what's up. I'm hoping it's not that... My fucking microphone is dying, because this microphone was quite a lot of money. Oh. Well, hopefully it's something else you can get diagnosed. Yeah, you can wish pretty hard up the change. Even done some time, you should have a pretty crumbs. Yeah, no money, no place to go, and no friends. What a loser. Huh? Here's your only acquaintances with people in this house. Visible life and invisible end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Natsume still doing I love here? Gregson. 
He's my favorite. He's not involved in the investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Well, I'm not changed because of how looks child or anything. But they act suspicious. Well. But I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the culprit. I mean, go have it. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Mr. Natsumi appears to be under suspicion again. It certainly seems that I like way. that he's got the full British getup, by the way. Mm -hmm. Or like like the, the Western hat. style suit. And then... No, no, I'm talking about Natsume. He's got like the ah. full like e English style suit. And then the wooden sandals. <laughs> it was like the one thing he was like, nah, I gotta keep these. Can't get rid of my sandals. He does just come across as such an odd fellow, doesn't he? Poor man. How unfortunate. I mean, it's kind of fair to be like, well, you lived here with the deceased. You're probably suspect prime until you have an alibi, right? Yeah. Anyway, I can't say much until the coroner gets here. But I think the fellow who's been a goner for that long body's still warm. Even if the inspector would allow it, I don't think I could bring myself to touch a dead body. Oh, that's where you draw the line, huh? What the f Why? I know he's a theater guy, but why did he feel the need to make a shitty-ass stage inside his house? Is that not what theater people do? I don't. Is that not what, what makes a good theologian? Wait, that's not... Thespian? I have- what a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside. And then, having finally regained my freedom, it starts happening all over again. Endless existence of excruciating experiences! True. I feel that. So the victim lived over here on the ground floor, and your room is just one story up, isn't it? Yes, that's right. In a way, we were neighbors, I suppose. So did you know the victim? Were you friends? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you can do it. What's the matter with Soseki-san now? It was an innocent enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, well, well I suppose he wasn't a complete stranger. But why did he ever invite me to his room? Never! On my honor, I swear it. What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you'd never asked now, aren't you, Mr. Naruto? When we found him here, I was wretched, which is why I sent word asking you to come. Through that specter over there. Hi, hi, Shums. <laughs> Can I help why, you? Why is he doing this? I don't fucking know. Um, Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Ha! You need only observe to know it, my dear fellow. Investigating naturally. There's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Sholmes, have you made some miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madam, patience. We've not been in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. <laughs> oh, good. My goodness. But isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm, now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw true incontrovertible incontro conclusions. The first, there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. Uh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Mr. Natsume, what's wrong? Is something that Mr. Shom said significant somehow? No, don't mind me. Forget I was even here. And my second conclusion is that there was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. Nonsense! Ah! Alright, Mr. Natsume, why are you reacting so extremely to Mr. Sholmes' deductions? 
<laughs> no, please. Pretend I'm not here. This is ineffable, inscrutable, insignificant. Impossible to ignore. Idiot. <laughs> you must tell us everything, Mr. Sholmes. Spare no detail. Det deta detail. But of course. Detail. Let the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my great deductions, prevented, presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've heard some truly astounding great deductions. Wait, he already knows we're going to do the thing. No doubt this will be no Wait, exception. He... What miracles will before, <laughs> before He already knows time. he's going to have to, f that we're going to fix it. Yeah. That's what the second act is. Ah. Why is he doing this? Th so, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular, Act 1. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. Topic 1. Better than a hand. Cause <laughs> of death. Conclusion. Oh, we don't know that yet. Careful observation, the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of hey, poison. Hmm. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of a so, sizable bar of soap. Nah, he definitely just ate soap. <laughs> I don't know why he was eating soap. Why is this soap set so purposely upon the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact, yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. What? It appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. He ate soap and died. <laughs> Taking up arms in the form of cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end he couldn't resist devouring the slippery feast. But London's foul soap is smirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. The Who soap the cup? and the lather about the young man's mouth are too <laughs> perfectly matched to ignore. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to excessive ingestion of foul soap. Though personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. Eight crans! <laughs> Cause of death, poisoning from soap ingestion. Oh, this is act two, that's right, I see. Topic two, suicide or murder. <laughs> the cause of death identified, we proceed to act two, where we ponder the next question. What's this suicide or murder? I just, every time Sosuke goes like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. The audience Whoa. will recall that the death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? A single teacup suggests the answer. Oh, God. He just fucking flash stepped in. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. A careful criminal could have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. They were forced open now. At the time of the incident, this door was locked. And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. How do you know that? In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Alone with his inferior soap from whence wafted an inferior scent. And with that acrid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his end in tragic solitude. We can take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on its way to the hereafter. But again, that feels in poor taste. <laughs> He's dead, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' great deduction. <laughs> Gregson definitely knows, man. There's just one thing, Mr. Sholmes. You are disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Mr. Narhado? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think the man would have eaten soap? It is quite apparent that this man had barely a penny to his name. Is it, it is a curious thing, but one to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly appetizing. Just one and more Just thing. one more thing. 
They I have, I have these problems. They bother me. They bother me. They keep me up at night. My wife eats so much. <laughs> How extraordinary. In truth, I have tried to let a soap myself in the past. I know, man. I know you eat soap. <laughs> I know you eat friends. You feed I get it, mean... okay? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. My postulation was that it would cleanse my gut. I had just done a lot of heroin. <laughs> I was I ate like way too many shrooms, and I figured when in Rome and did it? As I writhed in agony on the floor and split the contents of my stomach, yes, I believe it did. That is how charcoal works. They the dump it down your throat, a basically. Lesson. Soap is a quite poisonous. You... It has an unpleasant taste and it leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. Believe me, I wouldn't eat it even if you did. I'm glad Herlock Sholmes did the, the, the legwork to figure out that eating soap is unpleasant. Big ups on that one, dude. There's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh? What's that? It's Mr. Natsume. <laughs> it's just like the whole time, just in the background. <laughs> I couldn't help noticing him shuddering and quivering out in, of the corner of my eye. Almost as if Mr. Shom's deductions touched a nerve somehow. <laughs> Nonsense! Whoa. How did, <laughs> Whoa. Not... Well, that clenched teeth episode hmm. didn't last. I think, judging by Mr. Natsume's reaction, great detective's deductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Shom's observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it at an obtuse ankle. When he does that, it falls to us to straighten things out. Thunder. Alright, then wow, let's see what wow, we can do. Wow. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Sholmes' quite brilliant deductions. <laughs> I really like the way that Narado described it, because it's very true. He gets very close to the truth and then makes it comp overly complicated for no reason. <laughs> And discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. We can do that. Adorable. I'm sure we'll arrive at Mr. Shilm what Mr. Shilms meant to say in the first place. I Sasada is my favorite assistant. That's in a these very games. generous way of putting it. <laughs> I love her little fist bump. Yeah. Fighto. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows. For your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Holak Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular, Act 1. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Careful observation, the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of a sizable bar of soap, meaningful, indubitably. Why is the soap set so purposely upon the dish, like the victim's last supper, in fact? Yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, <laughs> the fork reveals the answer. It's not the fork. Well, you can't deny that a fool oh, right. the man was eating something, or about to eat They're something. They're tutorializing a little bit. I, I get it. I see. Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I would prefer to use a fork than to attempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half of the bar of soap is left on the plate. Might that there be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really ate some soap? There's no soap on the fork. <laughs> Ah, there's the rest of the soap. <laughs> the, other, the, the other half of the soap. We found the rest of the soap. <laughs> other piece of soap. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course. The other piece of soap reveals the answer. 
it being the other half of the soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could drive any man to attempt <laughs> to eat soap. <laughs> this fucking, oh, it's fucking, I hate this guy. Uh, it's obvious, the, really. What's the button to get rid of the UI? Because this is a very good shot. Oh, man, I can't remember. Why don't you just Google it? No. Do you want me to Google it? Ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I already moved on by accident. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Naruto, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. A cop. For London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of this plate. No. Mr. Sholmes is still pushing the soap argument, then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather <laughs> than ate it. If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food is the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? Ah, uh, yes. Cock. Bit. <laughs> what? What? Excuse you? Hmm? Take that! Hmm? Take that. <laughs> Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been the vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over the centuries. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. <laughs> Which leads us to the immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingestion of poison contained in this teacup. Wow. Poison in the tea. Solved. The cause of death identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? The single teacup suggests the answer. I think I saw another one on the floor somewhere. Ah, the Western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily in our deductions so far. It's not that much different from other cups, Narhado. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> cups are pretty universal when you get down to it. Nah, but They're really just small handle, bowls. Strange. It's strange, bizarre. I, I can't even comprehend it. Yes, we can imagine that shortly before his death. Mr. Shamspear was having a drink of tea, a, a, a cup of tea, a cup of joe. But there would be nothing remarkable about that. What troubles me is Mr. Natsume's reaction when he heard Mr. Sholmes suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for more clues. And the camera. <laughs> there is. He's holding it in his hand. Oh. It's, it's another Western vessel for infused... It's a teacup. <laughs> You're not doing this. <laughs> and it, too, is empty. Given that he's actually holding this one in his hand... We can assume that this is the cup from which Mr. Shamspear was actually drinking. But if that's the case, this changes everything. Everything we've deduced up to now is turned on its head. I have a bad feeling about this. I almost don't want to say it. Yes, I know exactly how you feel. Take that! I hit the wrong button, but I'm glad we got that western missile. <laughs> <laughs> drink. Did the man dine and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, this, this fucking pose that he's doing in this is really wild. You ever just sit with the your guy legs? Said it? You ever just sit with your legs spread all the way out and your arms at like 90 degree angles? Oh, let me try. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This doesn't seem very comfortable, ah. I'll be honest with you. I have to, maybe if I lock my Shaquille O'Neal chair. <laughs> ah, I hate it! <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. I, yes, felt, I felt like a weird room. big <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh. 
In other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. I wonder who it could be. At the very Certainly least, we can not stay with so Seki. Not Sume. <laughs> that someone else was here in this room last night taking tea with the victim. And who could it be? Well, what are you talking about? Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what, we, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. <laughs> you mean to say you know who exactly was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Is it not obvious? Yes. <laughs> Indeed, what reveals no. the answer, of course, is the broken lock. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the halcyon days of eating too much soap. But the identity of the guest who was in here last night when the victim passed away is... is something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Narhado. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. Pile of books. The books? Glasses. His glasses? No. Um, the glasses are nothing. Pile of books. At first glance, it seems that the only things in this room are makeshift stage and costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see. The titles read... The Picture of Monsieur Lecoq, <laughs> Canterbury Yearnings, and A Meal for Gabriel. Gabor Wait, Gabriel. I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but they're the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. Yes. What? Yes, on the day of the unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed. I remember Lecoq. Lecoq. <laughs> so Seki-san had just been to a bookshop and bought them, that's right. And now those three titles are here, in the room of the victim. Yet Mr. Natsume claims never to have been here before. What? What does this mean, do you think? I, I really don't know what to make of it. Pile of familiar books. I guess we probably gotta click the bottle, too. Yeah, let's just check. Could be In anything. In case it's something interesting. It's empty. Empty of liquid, but full of air. That makes you think, doesn't it? It <laughs> makes me think that you're full of hot air. We should be thinking about who was in the room at the time. <laughs> Bother, suzato sans quip and response was cleverer than my original riddle. She's <laughs> smarter than you, you just have to accept it. Take that! Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the pile of familiar books. Quite so, it's no mere coincidence that these three titles are in this room, it's the link to the truth. I like that when you correct him just a little bit, he immediately is like, yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, listen, dude. His brain is pudding. <laughs> There's no way this man's mind works properly. Oh! Mr. Natsume, you purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. <laughs> that, that's just a coincidence. In that case, you will be able to bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, never! Non-negotiable! If you can't bring your own copies here, it proves that these three books are in fact yours. Well... What well, doesn't prove it? It but... doesn't, but... Listen, we can lie to this guy. He's not that smart. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Having purchased the books four days ago Bro's and returned to your posing. lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could only have brought these three books here to the victim's room. The night of the murder! <laughs> Damn, look at him go. <laughs> That's how he moves. That's how he goes. Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial concluded at the Old Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> In short, there is only one possible conclusion. Why don't we just shimmy? 
crazy. The victim died here in this room last night as a result of poisoning. And that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> was you, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' great deduction. Soseki Natsume at the scene. Deduction complete. Elementary. Weird that they're able to use his catchphrase, but not his fucking name. <laughs> I feel like um, I think if you just say elementary outside of the whole like elementary my dear Watson it's probably not Yeah. like the word infinity isn't trademarked because Buzz Lightyear says to infinity and beyond fair point you've got me there like you gotta he looks like he's you probably gotta use the whole thing shit. this dude's just pooping <laughs> Not again, not again, not again. He never said he that. He also in the never books. said in the books. Huh. Not again. Well, they missed an option, mate. The water pee, you might have to accompany me down to the yard. Again. <laughs> but wait! Hold your horses! Yeah. <laughs> Door! Key! Locked! Entry! Exit! Entirely impossible! He's so flustered as being even stranger than normal. Oh, I know this one. It's an orangutan. <laughs> what? You didn't catch an alibi. You could've just made your own copy. What? You live in the same building, after all. You're playing opportunity, I'm sure. <laughs> Misery me! Roger, you get your chance to give your shot of the story later. Back speaks for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Ah, you, you, you horrible hawk <laughs> shows. He really has found himself an arch rival now, hasn't he? Come now, no dilly dallying. Up shot. Is your carriage waiting? Locum student, Mr. Naruto Esquire. I, I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me! Please! Please! I'm innocent! Alright, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk <laughs> about it. And that's just like, fucking Jesus. Fine. <laughs> and one more thing! Oh, yes? My, my poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me. Man, yeah, has, Wait, has somebody been feeding his cat for the last four days? Nah, cat's dead. And so, his evil curse still apparently unbroken. So Seki-san found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you! Well... Yeah, uh, that I do remember. Sherlock was the one that uh, that got him last time, also. Yes. Well, at least that means Inspector Crimson He identified no him here. as the <laughs> suspicious character. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Love that Gregson's like, don't touch my shit, and then he just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even leave an officer okay. in charge of the scene. Yes, that's right. Ah, and of course. What? Have you forgotten what the inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Garadeb, who discovered Mr. Shamspear. Ah, Mr. John Garadeb, yes. I expect we could find him in his sitting room on the top floor as usual. Right, we must remember to go and talk to him later then. All right, let's uh let's start clicking on stuff now. Now that the inspector is not here, I can click whatever I want. What's this? Looks like a corner of an envelope. Looks like part of an envelope, I think. 
Yes, I think you might be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps. When you look around the room, there's no sign of a letter. Or well, the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there. Ah, uh, she's right. And yet here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree. We'd better take this, just in case. The torn off end of an envelope has been entered into the court record. Look at these extravagant, bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room with its grim, shady goings on. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've always dreamt of being a king. Oh, I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord. A dai daimyo or such like. Dai the chonmage topknot. Every Japanese man wishes he had a chonmage. Oh, you look wonderful with one. And you already have the sword. Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a chonmage and a sword? I can't imagine specifically, but I bet it's racist. <laughs> That's a gas wall light, isn't it? It must be connected to a gas pipe in the wall. Gas lights, a gas stove. London really is a city of <laughs> gas. Now that one I'll say all day. Now that I think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Garrett have had an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's so much cozier. The gas meter. <laughs> it's locked. Yeah, I remember that. And where we have another disproportionately large machine. It looks like a meter of some sort. What were they talking about? Speak American, <laughs> dang it. I don't know either, Molo guy. Something about a chon mage? <laughs> I did almost oh, say chon mage the first time, and I'm like, S no, that's Steven probably Mage. <laughs> what, are you okay? <laughs> Steven, no. <laughs> It's it's taking me over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is a gas meter, I think. I see. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use with as they use it with coins. Yeah, Natsuma had one of these. Yeah, and it sucks. I see. Yes, now you pointed it out. I can see that there's a slot just here that looks like it would take a coin. So you mean if you put a coin in here? That's right. That would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yeah, remember Natsume? <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you were scatterbrained with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I'd be fucked. We'd be cold uh, every day. you examine the brick wall. Excellent view. As we've seen from the outside, the window's completely bricked up. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, what that window be seeing, though? What that window be seeing, though? I'll have what he's having. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a brick. That's a brick to brick. <laughs> I hate the internet. It's ruined so many words for me. Yeah. A, vest yeah. a vestige of the former window tax that the that Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Brigger Britain. I mean, making used people to. pay for the number of windows they had in the property. It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an unaffordable tax. Oh! What is it, Mr. Sato? <laughs> so Sato says, all taxes theft. <laughs> Hell yeah. If you look closely, a number of bricks are loose. No, yeah, those three I... in the corner. No, but I think taxes are good. They should just be used for good things instead of bad things. What the fuck? Soap. Oh, yes. It looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just here. Was it Mr. Shamspear who did it, I wonder, being the lodger renting this room? Ah, look at this, Mar 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 Mario. <laughs> look at this, On the Mario. outside, there's a... <laughs> look at <laughs> me showing my buddy Mario something. Look, 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 look at this, Mario. Wahoo! On the outside. <laughs> Wahoo! Dude, do you know how much I do random fucking Mario noises when I'm just like, I'll just be driving in my car and I'll make like a turn slightly too quick and I'll go, wah! Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? 
I'm like, what am I doing, man? I make sound what? effects for an audience of myself. Yahoo! It would have been better if she said the window is rock. That window is rock hard. <laughs> Do the kids even say rock hard anymore? I bet they don't. Sad. <laughs> I, I'll still say it. I'll still say fleek and chooky. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What, outside? They're gonna make you click on it again. Incredible. Oh. Burr, it's so cold outside. You can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. But more importantly, what is on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? <laughs> it's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside the window? I, I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather charming like that. So, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined up outside the window. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. Oh dear, I, I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at the soap. Ah! Do you see in the middle there? There's a patch that's a different color. It's... It's sort of transparent, but... Some sort of fancy design, I suppose. Only in Great Britain. Or they're smuggling something in the soap. It looks like the Kinumaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful. It's probably a very exciting, expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this ramshackle old brew? The bar of soap I hope it turns out that this guy was making counterfeit luxury soaps. That would be very funny. I think you were right the first time with the smuggling thing, probably. It's almost certainly smuggling, but I can have bad theories. I can throw those out sometimes to amuse myself. There's also something on that dresser, I think. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and bottle. Both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? What's the matter? <laughs> it's depressing being this in this poor ass fucker's room. Yeah. Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper. That's all. It's a good thing we got he adopted did love by his a wine. <laughs> it's a good thing we got adopted by a rich person, or this would be us probably. The funny part is that he's only rich because of the child. Yeah. Prosecutor Lord Von Zeeks. Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking. It's a waste, and that he should donate some to the needy. You can suggest it next time we meet. Fuck yeah, I really want Sasada <laughs> to fucking look at Zeke's right in the eye. And he's like, Blah, I'm Dracula, or whatever. And she's like, stop throwing your glassware. You cretin. <laughs> oh, the poor man. So young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death being poisoned as he was? I don't know. All we can do is hope that he'll be <laughs> reborn to a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Well, they have different soul societies, apparently, so maybe not. <laughs> Is that like a bleach thing? Yeah. J huh? Apparently English... J so, that uh, Burn the Witch show takes place in, like, British soul society. <laughs> which is a different place than regular soul society, apparently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I remember hearing about that thing. I remember seeing that thing and then people being like, by the way, that's like a Bleach spin spinoff. And I went, what? <laughs> it only this mentions one where that it's, it's like, in Soul Society at the very end of it. And it was like a one season show. Yeah. Sorry? It's... <laughs> Like how far away you were from your mic for that one. It's like you fell over. I made sure I had a reference at the ready for just such an occasion as this, actually. This book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed, The British Way. I'll just reread it now. One moment. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? <laughs> a shocking amount of content.
This is some sort of makeshift stage, I, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly Shakespeare performances? Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Naruto, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? Then you could practice your art every single day. I'll think about it, if you promise to don a beard and play the role of judge. Hilarious. Well, if, if that would help you achieve your goal. This I have to see. I do too. <laughs> I'll go along with this bit for the purposes of seeing where Sasato it goes. pretending to be the judge, she's just like, well, the defense now. <laughs> <laughs> the Garadim's room. Well. Well. <laughs> fucking something about it, man. It fucking gets me every time. 21st the February, fucking... the Garadim's room. I think the wife, Ronald is, Reagan in, well. the wife is, I believe, in jail right now. She's in jail because she stabbed that lady accidentally. Yeah, here we are again. The eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Garadip's the one who discovered the incident this morning, don't forget. There he is. Rah! Real trap, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation. It caught yesterday. It was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadib as anyone, really. Came straight here. Back, straight back here. I brought that business at the mail yesterday. Oh, I forgot he does this. Really expect to wake up for more bally nonsense this morning. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadib. Yes, as well as I'd like to know all about that dread loss of an actor chap. In the grand, grand floor room. I don't think I've heard that phrase, but it's clearly a joke I'm supposed to get. Dead loss. Informal British. A person or thing that is completely worthless. <laughs> Sad. Considering he's actually dead. <laughs> Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? Ah, I forgot how he looks straight on. Oh, yes. This morning's incident. It must have been a real shock for you this morning. I heard that you discovered what had happened. Ah, well, that homeless actor chap raises uh, at 5 o'clock shop every morning without fail. But at 5.30 this morning, we still hadn't lit the gas. So I went out there and I knocked on his door, but no badly answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door? Well, I called on that rum-looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could have just overslept by half an hour. That's very true, Mr. Nardo. If 30 minutes oversleeping warranted such behavior... I'd have to kick your down door down every morning. I mean, you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that. Is that just me? I see you're boarding our gaze now all of a sudden. Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found on the far side of the door. Mr. Shamspear. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe. Is that right? Yes, William Shamspear, from the ground floor room, three months ago now. Do you think he does his hair to look like a moon, or is it just naturally like that? I think it, I like to think it naturally spikes itself. It knows how he has to look. <laughs> and how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. <laughs> Bro, bro was broke as fuck. <laughs> How would you describe the man? Poor. <laughs> Fucking lacking bands. No, no Jordans. No, no bitches. bitches. Destitute. That's right. The redeeming feature of that room is the tree branch. 
I don't want you to live in a place like that. You were broke, or is it barely school loose? So hard to choose which category Soseki's zone would fall into. Oh, he's kind of both. Uh, Mr. Narahadil, that's a little rude. What? I didn't say that out loud. You don't know what I'm no, thinking. No, she remember she can she can mind read you. Oh yeah. She did it all the time in the first game. Remember? It was spooky. <laughs> He was doing research as well. Research? Into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare. Heard a few plays of the old barn myself, you know? Romeo and Hamlet and all that. <laughs> yes, William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sal. Sao? Sal? In. Sao? Sao? I think. In Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. Yes, as I, I know. didn't realize they would just call him a different name. It seems in It oh, seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shamspear would have had much in common. Shakespeare interpretation disagree Shakespeare interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Narhajo, really? How rude. Stop reading my thoughts, woman. It's pretty <laughs> so line. <laughs> so, so, uh -huh. Oh Mala guy. You've bought my my good graces. Well done. A clap for you. Come on, everybody, give a little clap. I don't think this is picking up. No. How close do I? Nope. What if I just keep talking through the clap noise? Oh, I can kind of hear it, sort of. Yes! Yes! Uh, you came. Well, what was I gonna say? Mm. Uh, so I know, I know that it's supposed to be that like his face is just so readable that she's like, stop thinking that. But I want it to be that she just can read his mind, but mm. nobody else's. And that he doesn't seem to know or care. <laughs> uh, after Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well, uh, must have been about six in the evening by the time I got home. The was coming out rather heavily, as I remember. It was completely dark already. I found actor chap was out of town. Mr. Garrett of there was no light from his room or something, I suppose. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so he sat in front of the fire up here. It was after eight before Sam Spear got back. The chap was up to past one in the morning, I'll have you know. Suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark here. Oh, thank you. That was very illuminating. I was thinking as he says, he's well, thinking under his breath and says, Sato manages to hear it. Yeah, but mine's funnier, so. You know. Is everything alright, Mr. Sato? Well, I was just thinking it's a little strange, that's all. Mr. Gerda, you were up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs. Now this blasted leg. Then, how is it that you seem to know the precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean? Bah! Holy Man, shit. look at him. <laughs> That's a very good point. I can't imagine you can hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? I say, whatever you're thinking, it's a bally after I'm a thrill parry, you know. I don't go around spying on my tennis. Why would I? Then how did you know, Mr. Gerida? It's a gas woman. The gas tells me everything. <laughs> I know what he means, I was gonna but say, it is an insane thing to say. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I assumed when he was telling us the story, because he had mentioned monitoring the gas, he's like, he hadn't turned his gas on or whatever. I'm like, he's he's monitoring the gas, so he... I. Basically, he's assuming that anytime they're paying for the gas, they're, like, awake or whatever. Right. The the gas? 
Speaking gas? <laughs> what on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, this is probably where the gas is supplied to the building by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less worked that out. Every room of the building is connected by a single pipe. The ga gas main outside. That seems... I mean, that's probably how that works, but it doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, I mean... I think that would be how you would do it. Yeah, I You guess... wouldn't have multiple gas lines running into one building. I suppose that's true. That'd be kind of psychotic. <laughs> it just feels strange. I'm not a city planner, though. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that, too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's say I wish there were hydro gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly. But at the same time, lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? They dim? Why? The flow of gas? Because they get the flow of gas. Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. Darling, all a good point. Back to the gas companies. Pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long worn out. Barely got any gas in them to start with. Opposite also true, of course. See what the lamps up here? They go brighter for the rest of the house. Ah, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. You've got it. That's just what I do all day. Mm hmm I'm, oh, a course, I'm a bored old I'm... man, and radio has been barely invented, and TV is not invented yet. Oh, of course. Because when people come back home in the evening, and before they go to sleep, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps and fires. Clever. Clever. Wait. Clever. <laughs> clever. 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 In point of fact, the room on the ground floor and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. I'm that's, very, very normal. That's insane, but cool. <laughs> I guess. And he freaking saw that while dodging random shit getting thrown at him. <laughs> Gosh, that's fascinating, Mr. Garadim. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Oh, well. Uh, nothing to it, really. And I can't really see that it's going to help us with the case, either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Garadub is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Right, but I think I'm going to call it there, because I'm extremely thirsty and ran out of water an hour ago. Uh, so You should have filled up? Yeah. Should have topped off? Should have. Didn't. What are you going to do? Should have. So, thanks for what- huh? I, I can't- there's literally no li- I could drink my nail polish remover, is that what you want? That's the only liquid I have on hand. <laughs> drink it. I'm not gonna do I'll that. i give you the 100 points. Drink it. I'll, I'll take a drink for you in like five- just for you in like five minutes, pal. Alright, have a good night, everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow for a uh, raincoat, hopefully. Bye. Bye-bye! Oh, yeah.